Okay, good evening everybody and welcome to our second technology live webinar for parents and guardians. Uh, my name is Murtaza Azdemir. I am the iLearn School's Director of Assessment and Technology. Uh, these webinars are open to all parents and guardians of iLearn schools. In this webinar, uh, we will go over a very important program today, Schoology. We have been using Schoology for more than 10 years in all our schools. This webinar will be presented by uh, Mr. Dimitri Lenchak. He is our Bergen Arts and Science Charter Middle Teacher and also School Instructional Technology Coordinator. Yes, Mr. Lenchak. Thank you so much, Mr. Ozdemir. Um, and thank you for the welcome. I'm very happy to see everybody that is on this uh, webinar. Um, this is aimed strictly for Schoology for parents. So today's webinar is going to be strictly for your purposes. I'm not going to be going over what the students see or what the teacher sees. I'm going strictly for the parent view. So here is my agenda for what I'm going to be going over. First, I'll start off with how to sign up and how to log in. From there, how to access your child's page and the materials that they get for class. And from there, how to access updates if your child's teacher chooses to use updates, how to access grades. I know that that's very important. And then I'll open up for questions. And here are just a few norms that I'm going to set from the very beginning, just so that everybody's clear on why things are done the way they are. So the first thing that you may have noticed is that you're muted at the very beginning of the meeting. You're automatically muted and you won't be able to unmute. And that's just so that I can get through, through everything that I need to get through. During the presentation, if you have any questions, you could pop them into the chat. They're available only to the iLearn support team. Uh, right now it's Mr. Ozdemir, me and Ms. Trewinski. And basically uh, at the end, I'll be able to answer all of these uh, questions. It's entirely possible that I answer what you asked during my presentation, but if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat and I'll address it at the end. Um, also at the very end, if there are more complicated questions, I'll allow um, any participant to unmute themselves so that you could physically ask the question. So if it's a really complicated question that you don't feel that you can express properly in the chat, by all means, you could wait until the end and uh, I can unmute you at that point. So the first thing, and I feel personally in my experience with Schoology, and I've been using Schoology for seven years at this point, that's about as long as I've been in iLearn schools. Uh, what I've noticed is that this is one of the di most difficult parts in terms of parent usage, how to get the student access code. So first of all, you should refer to any of your child's teachers to get the student access code and your child's teacher, depending on how comfortable they are with the Schoology platform, because I know that all teachers now grades three to 12 are using Schoology. So some teachers might not be familiar with it. Previously, it was only math and English and then whoever elected to use it. But um, depending on their comfort, uh, how comfortable they are, they'll know how to get the access code. And if not, they will find out. It's very simple to do from the teacher's end, but any, of your child's teacher will be able to get you a student access code. So another really common mistake that I have noticed throughout my time with Schoology is that when the code is sent, you'll notice the sample that I provided on the screen is that some parents think that these are three separate codes. It is actually one code that you should input when you sign in. And this is what it would look like. Please do not copy that down. Do not copy that down. That is not your child's code. That's only a sample. Each child's code is unique. And the good news is that you will be able to add multiple children in, into your parent's account. And I can show you how to do that uh, when I get into Schoology. And another big question is how many codes do I need? Do I need one for each of my child's courses? And the answer is no. What you do need is one course code, one student access code, and then it will give uh, you access to all of your child's classes. So if you have multiple children, you will need only two codes. This is what Schoology looks like for some people. This happens to be my Schoology and what mine looks like, as you'll notice. 
Um, I happen to use it fairly extensively. So I have different colored folders. There's things in the folders and a link. Um, so this is one way that it would look like. It looks a lot prettier than what I'm going to be showing you today. I felt that it wouldn't be appropriate for me to show you what my actual class looks like today. So I made a test demo course uh, that we will go into. So let's hop in to see what you as a parent can do on Schoology. So when you first go into Schoology, the website, this is what you will see. And what you as a first time user would need to do is go into sign up and select parents. When you do that, it will not take you to this page. I'm already logged in, but it will ask you for the student access code. So when, you, when it asks you for that student access code, you're going to put the code that looks like this sample that I provided earlier. And then it will take you through all of the things that you need to do. It will take you through all of the steps. It will ask you for your name, for your email, for your password, and then you are in, and it looks something like this. Now Schoology uh, usually does not look this way. And I know that a lot of parents, when they first see this, they say, well, where are my child's things? If you go into courses, there's nothing here. If you go into groups or anything, there is literally nothing here. What you need to do is on the top right corner of Schoology is select this button right here where your account is, and it will take you to your child. So my child's name is Bergen Tess, last name Tess, and that's where I'm gonna go to see what, that, uh, what my child has. And if you wanna add another child with, a, with another access code, this is where you would do it. So once I click on my child, you'll see once it loads that there's a lot more going on on the page. And essentially what you have is the same as the child's view. Uh, and you have more or less the same restrictions as your child. So for example, you won't be able to go into somebody else's uh, assignments to see what other students are doing, but you will be able to go into all of the different courses. So right now I'm enrolled in my test course and in Turkish too. So I'm going to go into the test course so that I can show you a few things that you can access and what you can see. And again, like I said, this is a test course, so it doesn't have any specific names or anything of that nature. Um, but I will be able to show you a few specific things. So when you go into the course, you'll be able to see assignments, tests, links that are provided by the teacher. There's different folders that you can go into and you will be able to see everything that your child sees. Now, when you want to access the material, you'll be able to go in. So I can go in here and I can see what my child has done. I can see the assignment and I can see what my child did. So my child at this point has submitted twice for this assignment. And I saw up here that they got a 100 out of 100. And when I wanna go back, you can opt to go this way, or you can go back to materials to the main page. Now, if I want to see the test, I can also go in depending on what your child teacher's availability settings are. So it looks to me right now that I cannot actually go in to see what the test says, but I can see in the uh, top corner, top right corner, that my child received a zero on this test. So I'll know that I need to talk to my child about this. I'm gonna go back into the main page. And sometimes teachers, I'm not saying that every teacher does this. Uh, I know that I have some parents that have uh, had me that, whose child has had me before that's on this Zoom right now. And they can attest to the fact that um, I do this. I provide updates for my students. And depending on the campus, I know that we have a lot of different campuses and each campus has their own IT. So some ITs have different setups going on, but I know that in our campus, if there is an update, it goes straight to your child's email as well as into Schoology. So it's all stored in an easy to access place. All you do is click update and you'll see what your child's teacher has updated you on. Not every teacher does this, but in case you want to check to see if there are updates, you can definitely look there. 
Now, before I get into what grades are and what the different symbols are, I do need to stress that at the end of the day, the final grade for your child is in the database. It's not on Schoology. But if you wanna see whether or not your child is missing an assignment or whether uh, they submitted something, I'll show you exactly what to look for uh, so that you're not relying solely on email or your child's word, or not to say that you shouldn't trust your child, obviously, but if you wanna double check, this would be the way to double check. The database is, again, strictly for the final grade. And as you may or may not have already realized, there are often syncing issues between Schoology and the database. So sometimes there is an issue. If you want to see the core of the problem, or if you wanna see where, uh, like where your child is, then you should definitely go into Schoology and grade. So for the first quarter, these are the assignments that my child had. And here's some of the symbols. So first of all, missing obviously means that the child has not submitted anything and the teacher has put in this specific symbol to indicate that it is missing. And unless it is turned in, it remains a zero. You might also see a symbol that says incomplete or exempt. If it's incomplete or exempt, it is not factoring in a zero into your child's grade. However, uh, you should speak to your child's teacher about an incomplete assignment or even a missing assignment. You'll notice here, this is a test. This is a quiz that was graded on Schoology. Oftentimes it's automatic depending on the type of assessment. And I noticed that my child received a zero. So as a parent, I might think, well, did my child's teacher actually put in the zero because they didn't take the test or did they actually earn that zero or earn that grade? And this symbol right here, that shows that your child has actually taken and submitted something. I know some of my students think that they're a little slick and what they do is they just open it and then submit it. And that shows that symbol, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they actually took the assessment. So you may want to have a conversation with your child's teacher if you see that there's a zero or any other kind of grade like that. But in case you're wondering whether or not it was submitted, that is the symbol that you would see for a test. If it's an assignment, this is the symbol that you would see. If you see a hyperlink like this, it means that it was physically done on Schoology. So that means if I click on this hyperlink, it will take me to that test that I showed you earlier. So again, I can't see the test, but I know that my child got zero. If there isn't a hyperlink, that means that it was probably a worksheet or something outside like participation, something that isn't done within the Schoology platform. Uh, just so you know, you won't, if you click on this, it's not going to take you anywhere. It's, it wasn't created on Schoology. Now, this is an example of an assignment. And again, I know that my child did it and they got the 100. So at this point, this is pretty much all that I had right now to share. So I see that there aren't any questions in the chat at the moment. I'll take a second to kind of wrap up. If you have any questions, you could absolutely put them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, What I can do is, this is it for me for now. I don't know if anyone has any questions, but I don't see any in the chat at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll allow participants to unmute themselves. I'm only kindly asking that if you unmute yourself to speak, that only one person is muted, uh, unmuted at a time and that one person speaks at a time only. So you should have this capability now. Does anyone have any questions? Mr. Lanchak? Yes. Uh, when there is an assignment uh, or a homework for any student, do the parents get any notification other than the students? Uh, I believe that, 
I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. It may vary by campus also. So that would be something to discuss with IT. I'm not sure if they get notifications on whether or not they receive an assignment. There should, let me check actually. I know that from the teacher's end that we can get notifications. And typically it'd be up here, so let's see. I know that I can get, actually, yes, you do get notifications. I've been getting notifications from Mr. Zinni recently because, mm. of this, uh, because of this test account, mm. now that I think about it. Yes, you should be able to get it. And if, if not, then you should definitely talk to your child's teacher. <laughs> let's see, I'm getting some questions in the chat. Uh, through Schoology, can they get notes or what apps they use? So it depends on the child's teacher. So they can access a notes if the child teacher provides it. So you would be, you would have to talk to the teacher if the notes are available, but if they say it's available on Schoology, I know for a fact that you can definitely take a look at it and I'll show you kind of what that would look like. I unfortunately can't post one right now because I'm logged in as a parent, so I can't do it from a teacher account, but it would look something like this or a link like this. It depends on the teacher and how they share it. Uh, I'm having trouble submitting assignments when it's a picture I need to upload. So that would have to be done, first of all, from the student account. And there is a button when I can't show you because this is the parent account, so it won't show for you. So for example, it would be an assignment like this, for example. There is no button for me to submit because I'm a parent. This would only be done from the child's end. But there should be, from the child's end, a button when they click Create Assignment, an option to submit a file. Um, hi there. I'm, I'm sorry, I just logged in because I was having a hard time logging in. Um, my, no, daughter's no new, my daughter's new to the school. Uh, she's in the Bronx campus. Uh, where, mm -hmm. how can I check if when the homework is submitted, if it, if it was submitted, <laughs> that if it, it went through, submitted? yes, like if it went through, how can I check if it went, uh, through also? So if it's an assignment like this, like the one that I have open right now, it will tell you that it was submitted, for example, Wednesday, October 21st, 2020. So if you go into the actual submission, it'll tell you right here when exactly it was submitted. Um, if you want to see if it was submitted, then I would say that the easiest way to check is to go into the grade book and to okay. see whether or not it has that uh, symbol that I was showing earlier. And by the way, just in case uh, anyone that came in a little bit late is wondering, this is going to be recorded, and Mr. Ozdemir, correct me if I'm wrong, this will be available on the school website? Yes. Or provided oh, okay. via email or something like that? Yes, yes. Okay. Let's see, private access only, wonderful. This happens for your students, or for your children sometimes, <laughs> that screen. It's nothing to worry about. I'm actually glad that it happened, because I know that some parents see that and they, are, they freak out, they can't get in. A lot of times, it's just a matter of refreshing. Yes, I was just gonna say that we had an issue like that on Friday. Like I had to like turn it off and reset the computer again, the laptop. That that will help. Um, before you do that, next time just click refresh. See if that helps. Another thing. I did hit, actually. I did I don't press the refresh button. Here. Oh yeah, so absolutely. I did, In and it case, wouldn't. It didn't work. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work. No, no, it was. It was still say it was. Um, she needed access but it was under so, her account i didn't know what the parent had access to an account like right now i'm sitting in front of it and i'm under her work and um I'm trying to see if we hit submit if it will sometimes it's a case-by-case -case basis i don't want to get too technical but some teachers have settings on where they have to submit things in a certain order okay and i know that some teachers or some kids have actually gotten that error before because they didn't do it in order when they were supposed to um it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis but i do know that that sometimes makes that error so just throwing that out there as well 
so just going back into the chat because a few more uh, questions went into the chat before anyone else unmutes. Um, let's see. Sometimes it gives me the option to add a submission and sometimes from the parent view. I'm actually uh, from the student view. Okay, I just read a little bit further. So sometimes teachers prevent submissions from occurring because the date of submission was already past due. So sometimes it, when it's late, I know that I do this, for example. So if I say that there's a due date, I'll uh, lock it at the due date which means that a student won't be able to submit again. So I, I guess the best case scenario in that case would be to talk to the teacher to see why they can't submit. Uh, let's see, I understand that they use Zoom. What app can I use to help my child to write notes? Um, I'm not sure that this is necessarily a Schoology question. So I would, actually refer that back to your child's teacher, unless I'm misunderstanding the question. Excuse me, I have, no I have a question about um, Scology. Sure. Now, sure. you know, like some teachers um, download some documents, like uh, my child's teacher download like a pages of the book, but I'm not able to mm -hmm. print it out. So for, oh. for her to read it, you know, um, after, after the school. So, you know, like if you were able to print out those pages so that way she could um, have them with her, not just for the class, but you know, when she practicing for the test, how that works. Do how you by any chance know out? what kind of file it is? Do you by any chance know what kind of file it is? Is it a Word it, document or is it a PDF file? It was a PDF file, if I'm not mistaken. Because um, it looks so, like the teacher, the teacher made a copy of a book and she just posted it in there, you know, for the kids to read. It. And it was like probably like ten pages. And I was like, you're not going to be reading all this in the computer. Your eyes are going to be, right. and you know, and you know, when you copy a page from a from a book, you know, it's not like it's kind of bended and stuff like that because it's a book that it was make a copy. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I will print it for you. So it will be better uh, for you to read it. But there is no option to print out. Can you download it to so, your computer first? Was yes. It? That was what I was going to say, it, actually. Yeah. Yes. So when, when it downloads, it downloads to the Google Drive. Okay. But then from there, I'm not able to print it. Okay, most probably this is not related to Scology or PDF document that uh, there was no printer installed or Google Drive is different than your local uh, computer. So it should be installed to Google Drive as a separate installation. Separate installation. Okay, yeah. so like uh, when, I, when I save it, I will have to save it as a, as as a, a PDF, PDF, PDF the computer. in the, yeah, in the, in the computer. computer. Not in oh. the Google Drive, not in the Google oh. Drive. Okay, because all right. The, in the Google Drive to install a local printer in Google Drive is another step. It's possible, but it's not automatic. It's another step. Okay, I understand. Thank you oh, for the clarification. Yeah, download it to your downloads for, folder or desktop folder and then print it. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Mr. Azamir. No problem. Are there any other questions? I don't see anything else in the chat currently. Mr. Lanchak, if a student submit a assignment, um, can they resubmit again? Let's say they were not uh, satisfied after they submitted and they understand that they make a mistake and they want to resubmit it. Does that depend yeah. on each assignment that the teacher like said it? Like how many times can they resubmit it? So it depends on the teacher, depends on the assignment, but the general answer to that is yes, they should be able to, especially if it's an assignment with this kind of symbol here. So as you could see, I actually did do two revisions here, which means that I submitted twice. So for example, my first submission, I'll show you. The first submission, 
just says the word the. And then if I go to the second submission, it has something else. I forgot what I wrote, but yeah, you have two, two uh, submissions here. And to do that, again, it would have to be from the child's view. It wouldn't be from the parent view. So from the child's end, there should be a resubmit assignment button or submit new draft. I forget exactly what it says, um, but they can click that again and submit again should the teacher allow it. And um, should there still be time left before the assignment is due? Schoology is actually moving very slowly for me at the moment. So I can't show you the other one. But um, having said that, long story short, yes. OK. And what about the scores? If the scores are different, even the last one, let's say, is, is lower than the first one or the second one, like how does Schoology know which one to take? Like there should be one score, but there are three submissions. So oh, that's a good scores. question. So that's a good question. So the most recent revision is what the teacher sees, but the teacher can also see that there are multiple versions of that document. I'm going to stop sharing because Schoology isn't working for me. But yeah, there are multiple options uh, for the teacher to see the different revisions, but mm -hmm. The first, the latest one, so the last one is the first one that the teacher sees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Let me see the chat. Do I have a test student account? that I can open. Yes, but Schoology right now is not working properly. If you would be so kind as to type in the chat instead of the annotate feature, I would truly appreciate that. Can the Schoology app be downloaded to the phone? Yes, it can. I've noticed that it doesn't have the same capabilities as the desktop version. So I know from the teacher's end, from my perspective, it's, it works. It's not as, I personally think, not as user-friendly as the website is, but theoretically, yes, you can download the app. And a lot of times it will take you directly in, into the website itself instead of using it within the app, if that makes sense. But yes, there is an app that you can log into. Is the assignment? Um, yes. So the question was, does the assignment tell you when the assignment is due? So again, it varies by teacher. Again, this is brand new for a lot of teachers due to the whole pandemic. Um, so it's brand new for pretty much anyone outside of English and math, but there are ways that teachers can put a timestamp and say exactly when something is due. So that would be something, I'll actually send that out, I think, to all the SITCs, Mr. Ozdemir, to show how to do that. Sure, yeah. So that all the teachers can figure mm -hmm. that out. So currently, I don't know how many teachers know how to do that, but, and it should transfer over into the database too. So as soon as you put it on Schoology, it will automatically migrate into the database. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? What about the communication? Can the students or parents communicate through Schoology with the teachers? Theoretically, yes, but it's my understanding through iLearn schools that Official communication should be done through email and not through Schoology. You can do it, but it's been strongly discouraged. Okay. I can't tell if I was that clear or not in, in the beginning, but for those of you that missed the very beginning of this meeting, this, uh, this recording will be provided 
uh, on the school website and or by email. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting any more messages in the chat currently. So if anyone wants to unmute themselves to explain a question, by all means, you have the capability. Does the assignment, oh, sorry. I understand some teachers need to update. Yeah, a lot of times uh, teachers need to learn more about the platform. So I know that when I started, I had to teach everything myself. Mr. Ozdemir, you know this. Yeah. Uh, when we first started using Schoology at the high school, a lot of it was just trial and error. And the good news is that now we have people uh, that know Schoology well enough that we can teach the teachers and mm -hmm. teach the parents and teach the students so that they know really well. Um, I know that a lot of teachers still need to learn about Schoology. It's brand new to them. So I'm kindly asking uh, that everyone's patient. But having said that, slowly but surely, everybody's getting used to Schoology as the main platform for grade three to 12. Um, is there a parent account because I use my son's account? So yes, there is a parent account. So you would be able to go into the beginning of this video once it's posted and officially uh, prepared to see. I go step by step exactly how to set up a parent account and what you can do on the parent account. The assignments show on my end extremely small. Is there a way to fix that? I would say to double check to see if your browser isn't uh, zoomed out too much. I know that sometimes teachers complain about that. Um, I don't know of any other way to change the text on Schoology, to be honest. It might be a browser issue. Oh, you fix it by making it smaller than 100. So it's too big in that case. Um, off the top of my head, I'm actually not sure. I think that's like a case by case basis. I haven't encountered that before. It could also depend on the, what device are, are you using. Oh, that's true. So every device is different and shows differently. Um, so that could also be an, uh, a thing. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it's on a laptop, he says. Mm -hmm. A school laptop? Well, I, I don't know why I can't see the chat. <laughs> but. Oh, you can't see the chat? You're on I island support, though. I you am, I am, but I can't. I, 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 I cannot see either, so I didn't um, understand why. I really? Just yeah. you. Oh, Sorry. I'm, on, I'm the only special one. <laughs> so, Ms. Ms. Um, so Ms. <laughs> said it to himself so that we don't see, like, all the chat. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's not my fault. Okay, Thank so you, it's okay. It's I'll okay. make it easier than writing it. Um, It's my personal computer. And it still mm -hmm. comes off. I'm using Firefox as the as the site, and um, it comes off at 100%. It's really small, and for mm -hmm. some reason, the smaller I make the screen, the bigger uh, her work is. My daughter. I would right. I would try Chrome. Chrome is the best. Um, supports all apps and and resources like the best, and it's mm -hmm. free. So switch to Chrome. Yeah, that. I would. I would switch to Chrome. I'll try it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've never encountered that, to be honest. Are there any other questions? If there are any further questions, they can send us an email uh, or they can go yeah, to absolutely. our support site uh, on islandschools.org. We have uh, a chat service, we have a phone service, we have a live Zoom uh, service uh, support like feature. So they can request any of those and get support if they have any further qu questions later on. Excellent. Yeah, so that everybody knows we have um, another webinar right after this one at seven, it's about Freckle. Freckle is being used in K to two, K to second grade, kindergarten to second grade. So if you have a child 
at kindergarten, first grade or second grade. So we expect you back at seven. And Ms. Trevinsky will be the presenter for that one. So we have about 20 minutes. So then we can stop here and then come back at seven. And we will use the same link for yes, the 7 p.m.? Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, just five, five minutes before seven, we will actually open it and then we'll start accept everybody like maybe one or two minutes before. And at seven, we'll start. Mr. Right. Evans is with us right now as well. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Okay, thank you for everybody for joining today's webinar and have a good night. Have a good night. Okay, good night, good night. Bye-bye.